Hello and welcome to a different style of video today. This is going to be the first in the series for this little tiny netbook that I got. This is the 1001 PX EPC, or how I like to call it, the EP. <laughs> it's so EP. <laughs> but today we are going to be installing Linux Mint on it. That's basically all we're going to do. We're just showing this off. This is the first in the series so this might be a little bit of a weirder episode just apologies if it's a little bit weird but i wanted to bring a little bit of a different vibe to this style of videos so i will be interrupting the video with a more calm tone explaining everything that's going on so i hope you do enjoy So essentially we started up the computer and now we're in the BIOS. Basically here I had to change a couple of settings. The settings that I had to change was I didn't know there was a boot picker so I changed over so that way the USB is seen as the main hard drive. And now we are booting. Oh goodness gracious, this computer is so slow. Now that we are booted up, we are going to install the operating system. Basically, we are just going to go through it, select the right settings, and all of that. Of course, because this computer is a little bit on the slower side, it is going to take a little bit of time to do that. That is how it is. Now, during the install, let's talk about a couple of things. One of the main things that this computer I have found is that this computer doesn't have many hours on it, actually. I need to look at the battery. Some operating systems allow you to see like how many hours the battery has gone through, like how many cycles, but truly the battery works perfectly. From what I could tell, this was only used between 2010 and 2011. So it was only used for maybe one year and who knows even if it was fully used for one year this is like the perfect laptop for like something like super small back in the day like you just needed to get on the internet and that is it this would have been perfect this computer originally shipped with windows 7 starter which i will be doing a video on windows 7 starter next video that this shows up in and it was also shipped with windows xp but this specific one came with windows 7 starter which if you do not know windows 7 starter is the operating system that was made specifically for netbooks they were trying to get netbooks to be off of windows xp because windows xp at the time was still supported 
other things about this computer. It came with one gigabyte of RAM. In this video, you see right now, I did have a two gigabyte stick and you might see a little bit of weirdness because of that. I had later learned that that two gigabyte stick had not been working. I think it was like upper memory that was a little bit weird, but it Linux made installed fine. It was just, there were some weird things, but I did put one gigabyte stick back in. Works perfectly fine. I did put in a SATA SSD in this because when I got it, it had no hard drive. Other than that, this is an Intel Atom N450. It's not a bad processor, but it was a very, very budget processor. It is a hyper-threaded processor, so it has in quotations, dual core capabilities, but it really isn't. It's also a 64-bit processor, but that's in air quotations. Again, contacts the memory itself, so like a chipset can't be like, oh, it can support up to three gigabytes of RAM. No, it's only can support up to two gigabytes of RAM because of the Intel Atom. So um, eventually I will get a two gigabyte stick, but that is the max that this thing can handle. Alrighty, and now it is fully installed to the computer, so let's restart. We are back in the BIOS just to make sure that the boot priority is set correctly and the main hard drive is the one in the computer. officially in the operating system. I did set up some settings. I did also start updating some stuff. In another video, I don't know if it'll be next video or when it will be, I'm going to show off like Half-Life 1 on a Linux distro. I think that would be kind of fun to try and uh, like get like some older games running on this thing. And Linux Mint is wonderful. I don't use it as my daily driver, but I have used it and dabbled with it every once in a while. And it is wonderful. I love Linux Mint. Linux Mint XFCE is like a really good operating system for for lower end PCs. This is kind of an extreme example because literally this thing is like barely able to run 64-bit because of how little RAM you have. If you did like this video, hit that like button. If you didn't like this video, hit that dislike button. I know this is a little bit more nerdy and this might not be for everyone. I do a lot of different stuff and I'm just trying out something new. This is like a very different video for me entirely being that I'm literally doing this voiceover after I have already filmed everything. So I wanted to try this. I hope you all like it. I hope you all liked the music and thank you all so much for so, 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 so much for watching. I hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.